Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! A warm welcome to our Easter Sunday service here at St Bede's and St Andrew's. As we celebrate Easter and the truth that Jesus has risen and that Jesus is alive today. Last week I set our children and young people a challenge to draw an Easter picture for us. And here we have here with us this morning some of the pictures uh, which our children and young people have sent in to us. And so they're going to appear on the screen. So this is Sophie's from St Bede's and she writes alongside this picture, Jesus who died for me and so we can have life then rise like the sun for us. This is Eleanor's, also from St Bede's. This picture is from Lydia, uh, who attends St Andrews. And finally, this picture is from Sarah, who also attends St Andrews Church. Thank you so much uh, to all our children and young people who have sent their pictures in and helped us to celebrate Easter uh, this morning. So we begin our worship by singing the great Easter anthem, Thine be the glory. So do join in uh, with the words or simply listen to the music and praise Jesus for the fact that he is risen and that he is with us today. Easter Sunday we come now to a time of confession where we confess the times when we have failed and doubted Jesus in our own lives just like those who were there with Jesus that very first Easter. So let's as we come to a time of confession let's pause and let's think about those things which we need to confess to him this morning. 
like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to pick up your Bibles now, uh, then Glyn is going to bring us our reading this morning from Matthew chapter 28, beginning to read at verse 1. Good morning. Today's reading is taken from Matthew 28, beginning at verse 1. After the Sabbath, as the first light of the new week dawned, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to keep vigil at the tomb. Suddenly the earth reeled and rocked under their feet as God's angel came down from heaven, came right up to where they were standing. He rolled back the stone and then sat on it. Shafts of lightning blazed from him. His garments shimmered snow white. The guards at the tomb were scared to death. They were so frightened they couldn't move. The angel spoke to the women. There's nothing to fear here. I know you're looking for Jesus, the one they nailed to the cross. He is not here. He was raised just as he said. Come and look at the place where he was placed. Now get on your way quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. The women, deep in wonder and full of joy, lost no time in leaving the tomb. They ran to tell the disciples. Then Jesus met them, stopping them in their tracks. Good morning, he said. They fell to their knees, embraced his feet and worshipped him. Jesus said, you're holding on to me for dear life. Don't be frightened like that. Go tell my brothers they are to go to Galilee and that I'll meet them there. This is the word of the Lord. So as we come to reflect again on the resurrection truth that Jesus is alive, let's pray together as we study his word. Lord Jesus, risen King, we thank you for the gift of your word and we pray that you would speak to us in our lives, we pray. Amen. Well, I wonder what is your greatest fear? What are you afraid of the most? This morning, I'm going to test your knowledge uh, of different phobias uh, with, of course, a quiz. Uh, so I'm going to read out the names of different phobias at a, and uh, they are the top five most common phobias in the world. And you have to guess sort of like what the phobia is a fear of. So let's see uh, if you can work out the answer uh, before I share the answer with you. So uh, the fifth uh, most common phobia in the world is Sinophobia. But what is this a fear of. It is of course the fear of dogs. So I don't know if you have a fear of dogs but um, if you do have a fear of dogs then uh, you have cynophobia. The fourth most common phobia in the world is aerophobia but what is aerophobia a fear of? Again just have a uh, think about that, maybe have a chat with your uh, the people that you're watching this with. Of course it is the fear of flying. The third most common phobia in the world is acrophobia. But what is acrophobia a fear of? Well acrophobia is 
the fear of heights. And actually 10% of the world's population uh, suffer from this. So maybe you're in that 10%. The second most common phobia in the world is aphidiophobia. But what is aphidiophobia a fear of? It is, of course, the fear of snakes. And 30% of the world's population have a fear of snakes. But, of course, the most common phobia in the world is arachnophobia but what is arachnophobia a fear of it is of course the fear of spiders of course if you remember uh, there was a great film in the 90s called arachnophobia um, which was a very scary if you did have a fear of spiders and again 33 percent of the world's population have a fear of spiders but I wonder, which of those fears do you share? Which of those fears do you have in common? Matthew's account of the first Easter Sunday, which we've heard uh, this morning, which uh, tells the story of how Jesus rose again, um, is the most dramatic account of Easter Sunday out of the four Gospel accounts. And Matthew's uh, account really reinforces the power of the resurrection, depicting an event which really shakes heaven and earth. And Matthew's account also highlights the fear that the women who first arrived at the tomb that Easter Sunday morning um, experienced uh, in their own lives. Because we forget that when we look back at the familiar accounts, we, who are the readers, we know what happened on Easter Sunday. Okay? But we also know what happens afterwards. Because we're looking back at the story. We know that it is true that Jesus is risen. We know that it is true that he is alive. That he is with us today. We too know already the joy of the resurrection. But for Mary and Mary at that very moment as they went looking for the tomb. on that Early on that Easter Sunday morning. They had no idea what was happening around them, or indeed, what was going to happen. And with violent earthquakes, angels appearing everywhere, Roman guards lying uh, around, scared witless, and, and messages that Jesus, who had been crucified, had risen, is it no wonder that Mary and Mary were bewildered? They were fearful about what was going on. Which is why both the angel in verse 5 and indeed the risen Jesus, in verse 10, encouraged the women with the same words. Do not be afraid. And in Matthew's Gospel in particular, when, this, when a phrase is repeated twice, Matthew is highlighting that actually there's an important message that we need to take on board uh, when he repeats something again and again. And so here, when Jesus repeats himself... Uh, do not be afraid. Matthew is highlighting a really important message for us. Because even though the women were bewildered uh, and fearful as they witnessed the power of the resurrection, they need not be afraid. And the same goes for us here today too. As we read and hear the power of the resurrection, we too have no need to be afraid. Yet going back to our reading, why on that first Easter Sunday are Mary and Mary told the words, do not be afraid? What reason do they have not to be afraid? It's not surprising, is it, that they were afraid with all the events that were happening around them. But again, Matthew in his Gospel gives us a clear explanation. The reason why the women should not be afraid it's because God is at work here. Throughout the Bible, when angels appear, God is at work. From Genesis, when angels appear to Lot and Jacob, where God is at work forming a new relationship with his chosen people, the Jews. To two kings, where God is at work as angels form an army of the Lord 
to protect Elisha and the people. To the beginning of Matthew and Luke, where God is at work through his angels as they prepare the world for the birth of Jesus. There is a strong tradition here that when angels appear, God is powerfully at work writing a new chapter of salvation history. And the fact that Matthew mentions the angels appearing uh, here at the resurrection is a key sign to the women and indeed us that we have no need to be afraid in the resurrection of Jesus. Because in the resurrection of Jesus, God is powerfully at work and he is writing a new chapter of salvation history. Through the risen Jesus, God begins a new chapter in history. Jesus' death and resurrection has defeated the era of sin forever. Sin has lost its grip on us. And no longer will we be separated from God because of our sins, because of our transgressions. Through the risen Jesus, God has established a new kingdom. And the risen Jesus is our Lord and King forevermore. We are now part of that kingdom. And we now have a great commission as we follow the risen Jesus as our Lord and King. And of course, through the risen Jesus, we have new life. Through the risen Jesus who is with us, we have life in all its fullness. A life that lasts forever. And we share in the glory of the risen Jesus forevermore. And that's why we celebrate Easter today. Because God is at work through our risen Lord and Saviour. Now, of course, thinking about ourselves Today, on Easter Sunday in 2020, we as a nation and as a world are faced with a fearful and scary situation as coronavirus continues to sweep across the globe. Yet I believe that the risen Jesus, who died, rose again and is alive today, he stands amongst us and he says to you and to me today, do not be afraid. Because even in the midst of this crisis that we face, we need not be afraid because God is powerfully at work today. God, who is powerfully at work through the risen Jesus that first Easter, is powerfully at work through the risen Jesus in our world today in 2020. As we pray for ourselves and our world, as we put our hope in the risen Jesus, we trust that just as God, through the power of the risen Jesus, conquered sin and death that first Easter, God, through the power of the risen Jesus, he will conquer this virus that grips our world. And he will come to save and rescue us today. Earlier this week, we received the sad news that a faithful member of St Andrew's Church, Graham Hodson, died in a hospital. And though we grieve for Graham, and we pray for Kathleen and the family at this very difficult time, even here God is at work. Because as Paul reminds us in Colossians 3 verse 3, Graham's life is now hidden in Christ, and Graham now shares in Jesus' resurrection and glory. And that is our prayer and hope for all who we know who have died or who are close to death at this time. This Easter season is going to be very different compared to any other Easter season that we have experienced in our lives. Yet the message of Easter Sunday is, an imp is as important today as it always has been. As you go through this Easter season, May you remember and hold on to these truths. Do not be afraid. God is at work. Jesus, the risen King, is amongst us. Do not be afraid. God is at work. Jesus, the risen King, is amongst us. And so may we continue to pray in faith that God, through the risen Jesus, will powerfully act to save and rescue us today. And as we face our fears, 
may we in faith boldly proclaim, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. In response to what I've just shared, we're going to uh, listen to another song or join in with another song. It's uh, Sea Water Morning. And again, it speaks of the wonderful truths that we celebrate on Easter Sunday. St. Andrews is now going to lead us in a time of prayer. As we come to our time of prayer on this Easter Sunday morning, we may find ourselves with mixed feelings. On the one hand, we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus through which we have the gift of salvation. On the other, we are in a time of concern, isolation and grief for many. I was drawn to a familiar passage in Romans 8. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is in the recognition of that love that we now pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, especially today, for the sacrifice you made so that we can live in the knowledge of forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Thank you for the beauty of this season, of new birth in nature, for the promise of warmer and longer days. Give us eyes to see your beauty and take the time to appreciate it. Thank you that in you we are new creations. Remind us that we are forgiven and equipped with the Holy Spirit for your work here. Lord of our salvation, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world. As leaders the world over are making decisions and choices to deal with the COVID-19 virus, we pray that you would guide and direct their decision making. Be with the members of our own government as they continue to lead whilst Boris Johnson fights the virus in hospital. Thank you for the aid that governments are making available for those who are financially impacted and we pray that it is accessible to all those that need it. As all nations deal with this, may there be humanity over politics, a 
and generosity over greed. Lord of wisdom, hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to protect our health and care workers and their families as they risk themselves for others. Thank you for those doctors and nurses who are returning to the workforce and for the thousands of people volunteering in the health service. We also thank you for all those that continue to work to enable life to keep going. We think of the farmers, the lorry drivers, shop workers and all those giving their time to help meet the needs of others. It has been heartwarming for the communities to see communities mobilised to look after each other, deliver food, sing to entertain, join together to exercise and more neighbours getting to know each other. It reminds us of the early church where all worked together to make sure everyone's needs were met. Give us eyes to see where the needs are and hearts of love to help wherever we safely can. We pray that this spirit of help and community will become a habit and not just a response to a crisis. God of compassion, hear our prayer. Lord, many households are spending more time together than usual, even as many are unable to meet up with their wider family in person. We pray for patience and greater cohesion for families and the chance to embrace their time together and grow stronger. Father, we thank you for modern technology, which enables us to keep in touch and join in worship even whilst we stay at home. We pray that all people will look to you for their hope and security. And with the increasing online services, people will be drawn to you and receive your gift of salvation. God of love, hear our prayer. Lord, you healed the people brought to you while you were on earth. We bring all those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit before you. We name those for whom we have a particular concern in our hearts now. We ask that you bring comfort and healing to them and be with all those that love them and look after them. We also bring before you the families that are grieving loved ones and for whom the saying goodbye is hampered by social distancing. We think particularly of the family and friends of Graham Hodson from our church family. May they all feel your love and be supported in their grief. Lord of healing, hear our prayer. As we move forward into the week as a church family, help us to look for ways to grow closer to you. Help us to use extra time on our hands to appreciate your world and serve you and other people and once again to continue to count our many blessings day by day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. And as we conclude our prayers, let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, before we conclude our service, I just have a couple of notices to share with you. Uh, last week we had a very successful Zoom meeting, over 20 of us uh, shared fellowship after the service last Sunday and, and it was great to uh, see familiar faces and to chat and catch up with people last week. But this week uh, we are going to do uh, two Zoom meetings, uh, one at 11 o'clock for St Bede's and one at 11.30 for St Andrews. Uh, details of those Zoom meetings are on the screen uh, so all you need to do is log on, download the app uh, and then use the ID numbers uh, to uh, access those meetings. Everybody is welcome at either or both, um, so uh, you don't have to go to your church's one, you can go to either. Um, but it, as it was a little difficult to 
uh, have 20 people all talking at once last week, um, hopefully having two meetings and splitting us up a little bit uh, might make it more easier for us to chat. Secondly, uh, just a note about pastoral care at St Andrews and St Bede's. Um, as churches, we still want to continue to pray for you, uh, to keep in touch. Um, and uh, if you do need uh, any assistance with shopping, then, then do get in touch. At St Bede's, uh, the people to contact are myself and Malcolm Bristol. And at St Andrews, the people to contact are uh, myself and Julia Davis. And also, please do let us know uh, if um, yourself or anyone you know uh, is poorly, because then we can pray for you. Um, and we can make sure that we support you and uphold you in prayer uh, in this difficult time. Thirdly, we've already mentioned during our service this morning the sad news that Graham Hodson from St Andrews passed away earlier this week. But Kathleen, his wife, has been in touch just to uh, say a huge thank you uh, to everybody who has sent cards or been in touch by phone uh, and supported the family through this difficult time. So do accept uh, Kathleen's thanks and do continue to pray for Kathleen and the family uh, as uh, they grieve for, for Graham. We've also got some really good news to share with you. Many of you will know uh, Julia Davis, our Assistant Minister at St Andrews, uh, was nominated to receive, to receive Monday money uh, from the Queen uh, this week. Sadly, of course, uh, the ceremony at Windsor Castle was cancelled, uh, obviously due to the coronavirus. But Julia still received her Monday money, and here is uh, a letter that she received this week with her Monday money uh, from the Queen. So congratulations to Julia, uh, and I know that Julia wanted to share her good news with you all uh, this morning. And then finally, um, it's great that um, in this crisis, there is so much free Christian content online that we can access, not least our online services. But this week, uh, Spring Harvest uh, are doing a, a Spring Harvest at home. Um, all you have to do is register on their site, uh, and this week, uh, from uh, Tuesday to Friday, you can access um, all their talks. So uh, do log on uh, following the link on the screen, um, and access uh, that really good teaching uh, that's available to you this week. And so let's conclude our Easter service with a final blessing. So may the celebration of resurrection life bring you new hope in your being. May the victory over earthly death turn your eyes to the promise of heaven. May the empty tomb help you to leave your sorrows at the foot of the cross, so that God's hope, God's promises, God's forgiveness may reign in your life forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.